हेलो एवरीवन इन द करंट बिजनेस सिनेरियो सेकेंडमेंट ऑफ एम्प्लॉई इज अ कॉमन प्रैक्टिस अमंगस्ट ग्रुप एंटिटीज सिचुएटेड अक्रॉस वेरियस जोरिस्टिक्शन वट डज सेकेंडमेंट ऑफ एम्प्लॉई मीन्स इट यूजली इन्वॉल्व डिप्लॉयमेंट ऑफ हाईली स्किल्ड एम्प्लॉज ऑफ वन एंटिटी टू इट्स अनदर एंटिटी सिचुएटेड इन अ डिफरेंट जोरिस्टिक्शन that entity can be subsidiary or a branch office now the entity where these employees are deployed that entity takes uses skill and expertise of the second end employees and provide operational and back end support to that first entity so it is nothing but what in india we call deputation now taxability of secondment of employee has been a contentious issue for quite some time and recently honorable supreme court delivered a landmark ruling in this regard also ratio of this ruling will make companies revisit their contract drafting basics so the facts of the case were an overseas entity deployed certain employees to its group entity situated in india this indian entity was providing operational support to the overseas entity these seconded employees remained on the payroll of their original employer that is overseas entity they continued to enjoy various employment benefits social security benefits that were provided by their original employer in that jurisdiction however control and supervision over these seconded employees was handed over to indian entity for the deployment period even the salary and other expenses of these employees was borne by the indian entity and also a contract was entered between the indian entity and the seconded employees stipulated these terms now regarding the taxability of this event the indian entity was contending that there is an employer employee relationship between seconded employee and indian entity and since there is an employer employee relationship no service tax is levyable for gst period they would have contended that no gst is levyable because there is an employer employee relationship so basically the issue before honorable supreme court was this contract between indian entity and those seconded employees is a contract of service or contract for service honorable supreme court found that the so called contract has all the trappings of contract of service that is from a plain reading of this contract it appears that it there is an employer employee relationship those employees are under the control and supervision of the indian entity indian entity pays their salary and other expenses indian entity can require the seconded employees to return even they can terminate their service here so essentially this contract has all the trappings of an employer employee relationship prima facie prima facie it appears to be a contract of service no doubt about it what honorable supreme court says next is the importance of this ruling honorable supreme court said that nomenclature of any document is not decisive of its true nature and overall reading of this document is to be made and then its impact is to be seen that is substance over form we don't care what you call this contract to be we will read this document in its entirety under the facts and circumstances of the case and then we will discern the true intent behind this contract honorable supreme court held that in this case the real intention between the parties is for overseas entity to secure contracts which can be performed only by its highly skilled and trained personnel 
For this, they deploy these skilled personals in its Indian entity. The Indian entity's work is limited to performing the tasks so given by the overseas entity with the help of those seconded employees, those trained employees that are deployed with the Indian entity for a duration in which it is expected that that task would be completed. Those employees remain on the payroll of overseas company. So this is nothing but a manpower supply. When the secondment period is over, these employees revert to their overseas employer and they can be next sent on secondment somewhere else. So there is no employer-employee relationship between the Indian entity and the seconded employees. This is not a contract of service. And hence, service tax would be liable here. And following the ratio, GST would be liable on this transaction. Now, this is not the first time that courts have gone for substance over form. That is beyond the nomenclature of that document between the parties. Way back, Honorable Supreme Court followed the same principle in the case of R.N. Kapoor. The issue involved in that case was very interesting. Generally, when we take a room in a hotel, it is a license, not a lease of that hotel room. That is, we are only given a permission to use that room. Possession of that room is never handed over to us. It is very basic. Now the issue was, in that hotel, a barber was running his shop. The contract was drafted in terms that those rooms are licensed to that barber. It is not a lease. Honorable Supreme Court said, said, we don't care what nomenclature you give to that contract. It is immaterial to us what you call it. Even though you are calling it a license, but it has all the essentials of a lease agreement. That barber is not just merely permitted to use those rooms as other hotel guests. He is running his business from these two rooms. And that cannot be done unless he has possession of those rooms. So it is a lease agreement. So courts have time and again reminded us that no matter how smartly we try to draft our contracts, whatever form we give to them, whatever nomenclature we give to them, to determine its true intent, courts can always go into the substance. So with this ruling, I just want you to have one takeaway that is please 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 be very careful and mindful while drafting your contracts. Your contract should not be saying one thing and meaning other because one can never fool the judiciary of this country. That's it for this video. I hope you like this video. I'll see you in another video. Till then take care. Have a good day. Bye bye.